My name is Eva Schechtman. I'm, I am the president of the Hunger Mountain Co-op Council. It is my pleasure to welcome you to our 2022 annual member meeting in which we are celebrating 50 years of cooperation in our central Vermont community. Recording in progress. I'm sorry that we cannot be in person for this year's annual meeting. We judge that this online format was our best option given ongoing safety concerns. Hopefully we will be able to gather in person next year. In the meantime, we have a lovely program planned and we are very happy that you can join us. Let's start by introducing the Cobb Council, Council, our governing body. Most of our- uh, I'm Catherine Lothar. I'm very grateful to be on the Co-op Council where I chair the Carbon Neutrality Committee and work to help the Co-op reduce its carbon emissions. Hello, my name is Andrew Sullivan. I was elected to the council in 2020 and my term ends this year. I would like to thank everyone for attending this meeting and for voting. Hi everyone, my name is Jeff Roberts. I've been a member of the co-op since the mid 1990s when I first arrived in Vermont and an interim board member since earlier this year. I've been really thrilled with my experience so far and believe in the life of this organization and its critical importance to central Vermont. Thank you, bye-bye. Hi everyone and welcome. My name is Julia Shire. I've had the pleasure of being on the council for the last year in an interim role and served as the treasurer and on a few committees. Um, I've just been so impressed with the uh, dedication and commitment of this small group to uh, the success of the co-op in all of the, the different definitions of the way our co-op serves our community and want to wish you a very warm welcome tonight. Hi, my name is RJ Adler. I've been on the council since 2020 and I'm from Berlin, Vermont. Hi everyone, welcome to this year's annual meeting. My name's Jen Poirier. I've been on the council since 2020 and I live right here in Montpelier. Hello, I'm Stephen Farnham. I've served on the executive committee as the council secretary for the past couple of years. In addition, I've also served on several other committees, including bylaws, communications, ethics, recruitment, and rules since first being elected to the council in 2014. It is an honor to be able to serve the co-op and the greater community in this capacity. I believe I speak for all of us on the council when I say your continued support of Hunger Mountain Co-op and of the council is greatly appreciated. I hope you find the offerings in this year's virtual annual meeting enjoyable and informative. Please don't hesitate to give us feedback after the meeting and thank you so much for joining us. Thanks everybody. We heard from everyone on the council except for council member Lauren Antler and staff representative Nick Severed. Now it is my pleasure to introduce tonight's moderator, Bonnie Hudspeth. Bonnie lives in Putney and is in charge of cooperative development for the neighboring Food Co-op Association. She also serves as president of the board of Cooperative Fund of the Northeast. Welcome back, Bonnie, and thank you for returning to moderate our meeting again this year. Well, thank you, Eva, and welcome co-op friends. If it wasn't clear from Eva's introduction, I am a co-op lover and a co-op nerd. I'm really happy to be here with you all tonight, and especially for this momentous occasion as we're celebrating half a century of profound community impact through the Hunger Mountain Co-op. So let's raise a glass to that. What a great time to, to gather in celebration of the co-op and reflect on how our community has changed for the better, right? By having this community owned and controlled grocery store as a vibrant hub for Montpelier and surrounding communities. From last year's annual meeting, we heard your desire for more interaction. So we already switched to using the Zoom meeting platform for this year's meeting so we can see each other. And I encourage you, if you're comfortable, to turn on your video so we can wave to each other. Um, and we want you to have the best experience. Yeah, give the thumbs up. We want you to have the best experience possible tonight. So I'm going to go over a couple of features that will help you optimize your time. 
So first, you've got view options. You can see just the speaker or you can see the gallery and see all your friends and neighbors by going up to the top right corner of your screen. You'll see a little grid with view so you can select what you're seeing. You also can enable captions if you want by pressing the show captions button at the bottom of your screen. And tonight we will be using reactions button for voting. So let's try that now. At the bottom of your screen, you will you can see a reactions button with a little smiley face and a plus. So if you could go down to reactions and press on a reaction, either a celebration perhaps, or a heart, Thumbs up. Okay, I see a cup of coffee from Larry. Thumbs up from Gail. Steven gave a thumbs up. Great. Check mark from Jess. Okay, we've got those reactions and you can practice. You can do it at any point before we vote. If the chat isn't visible for you, you can just hover your mouse over the bottom of the screen and click on the chat button to open it. That way you can communicate. And if you want any tech support, just send a message in the chat and one of the st awesome staff will help you out. You can also chat to the whole group or chat to individuals if you wanna say hi to your, your co-op buddies and neighbors and send them a direct message, you should be able to do that. And if we run out of time tonight, we don't get all of your questions, rest assured, all of your questions are gonna be responded to. We're gonna collect them and we're going to post responses. So we'll get back to you. And finally, those of you thinking about, what about the raffle? Any member who pre-registered for tonight's annual meeting is automatically enrolled in the raffle and will announce winners at the end. And we hope we, you'll be able to stick around, but if not, you know, don't worry about it. We'll still post results online and you can still win. So tonight's meeting is being broadcast on Comcast channel 1075 or at orcamedia.net and a video recording by ORCA will also be posted for later viewing. So thank you to the ORCA team for making this happen. And let's dig into our plan for the evening together. So after our welcome, we are going to establish quorum and approve minutes. We will then be celebrating co-op employees and hear about the cooperative, the community fund grants. Then we'll get a chance to review the impact reports and take your questions. We'll share information about council elections. We'll celebrate the community Cooperative Community Award. And we'll wrap up with closing and raffles, of course. And while we're sharing this space together, I wanted to share meeting some meeting ground rules that are created by and used by the Co-ops Council that really will help us clarify expectations of how we want to be in this space together. So we encourage you to speak from your own perspective, that all questions are good ones, to communicate respectfully, to have an awareness of how much you speak, and to respect the viewpoints of others and listen attentively, to bring your curiosity and an open mind to tonight's meeting, and the bottom line, be kind. Let's be kind to each other. And with that in mind, let's get to some brief business. Approving the 2021 annual meeting minutes and the 2022 special meeting minutes. Both are posted on the co-ops website. And um, first we're going to establish quorum. So we've got community relations assistant manager Rowan Sherwood in the house to help us out. Yes, and we have met quorum. Our quorum is 100, and there are currently 147 of us here. So welcome, everybody, and thanks for being here. That is a robust quorum. I'm so glad you all are here. Okay, now that we have quorum, can we have a motion and a second to approve the 2021 annual meeting minutes? And the way I want you to motion is to go to the reaction and raise your hand to make a motion. Oh, okay, great. I see a motion from Eva and I see a second from Jen Poyer. Great, thank you. Now, if you have any comments, please type them in the chat now so we can read them. Jess has 
posted the annual meeting minutes. Thank you, Jess. Not seeing any comments. So now it's time to vote. So now you can go down to the reactions and click on the green check mark to approve or the red X. The reactions is a little smiley face at the bottom of your computer. I see a number of green checks. Look at that. And as you're finding those reactions, I hope y'all are drinking a good beverage, eating some good food, maybe even that you purchased at the co-op earlier today. Great. I'm seeing a lot of green check marks. Thank you all. Excellent. So I'm excited to announce the 2021 annual meeting minutes of Hunger Mountain Co-op are thus approved. Democracy in action. Okay, now it's time for our next vote. We'll be voting on the 2022 special meeting minutes. And first, I just want to thank um, co-op member owner Elizabeth Jesdale. She reached out with an amendment to the minutes. She just wanted to note that she was not called on for motions during the course of the meeting, and she could not speak to the motions, could not unmute herself to participate when co-hosts of the meetings could unmute themselves to participate and went ahead to call to questions before she and others could participate in discussion. So we just wanted to make sure we noted this and added this amendment from Elizabeth to the minutes. With this noted, can we have a motion and a second to approve the 2022 special meeting minutes as amended? Great. I see Billy, a motion from Billy and a second from Ed and Ginny. We'll have to choose one of you. <laughs> Great. Now, it's time to vote again, right? So find that green check mark at, or the red X on your screen in the reactions. Great. I'm seeing lots of green check marks. Thank you for participating and voting, everyone. I'll give you another minute here. I don't see anything in the comments. Just wanted to make sure that you have a chance to weigh in if you need to. Okay, lots of green check marks. Great. I'm excited to announce the 2022 special meeting minutes are thus approved. So congrats everyone. Our first business, let's do a little celebration. I gotta find my celebration reaction. Woohoo! Our, our business, our first item business is officially done. And now let's celebrate by turning it back to Eva for the 50th anniversary celebration. Thank you, Bonnie. Um, it is so exciting to be celebrating our 50th anniversary as a food co-op. It's incredible to think about all the changes that have occurred in the world and in our community since 1972. I am so grateful for my parents' generation who had the vision and wherewithal to start buying clubs in Plainfield and Montpelier, which part of a nationwide movement turned into food co-op stores in just a few years, paving the way for supporting the growth of the organic and local foods movements that has had such a positive effect on our community. I joined the Hunger Mountain Co-op in 1988. My favorite snacks that year were Scotty Harrison's freshly made shrimp egg rolls, a baguette from Upland Bakers in Marshfield, the only freshly baked handmade French bread you could get in Vermont, and Butterworks Farm cream top yogurt, possibly the only Vermont organic dairy selling yogurt to the co-op in 1988. Interest in organic and locally made products outgrew the Berry Street store. Co-op members decided to find a new larger location and moved to Stonecutter's Way in 1997. Since then, small farms have started growing wheat again in Charlotte, Greensboro, and Les Edges, Quebec, among many small farms in the region, contributing to local bread bakeries, blossoming and maturing to the point where there are now several aisles dedicated to local bakeries at the store, including gluten-free bakeries for which I'm grateful. Hunger Mountain Co-op is at the center of the growth of the organic and local food movements in central Vermont, 
and has had an impact that is both large and varied on the community, making it possible for small farms like the BIPOC owned Nama Farm in Cabot to have a place to sell their preserves locally, which in turn supports their efforts to build sustainable community through seed sharing, community canning parties, and potlucks. The co-op's 387 vendors contribute enormously to the co-op's ability to provide high quality local and organic foods to the community. And in turn, the co-op supports the local food system and continues to lead in maintaining a membership-led, democratic, and collaborative organization. The future continues to be cooperatives where the community and sustainability come before profits. What does the next 50 years of cooperation in our community look like to you? Our friends at Orca Media created a wonderful 50th anniversary video. Let's watch now. The Hunger Mountain Co-op is where we do the bulk of our shopping. It's my first place to shop. I get whatever I can at the co-op. I'm really proud of the fact that the co-op is where people want to come to shop. Having a co-op, having a local natural food store and a cooperative was a big part of moving here and choosing to live in Montpelier. It's as simple and foundational as walking in the doors and knowing a lot of people. I was like coming in every day. The staff was like, she's back, buying a lot of groceries. You get the personalized touch. You know the staff by name and you see your friends all the time. I and mean, that's a very different experience than walking into a big box store. My favorite part of the co-op is all the people working together on a common mission. Thousands of people between our members, our local vendors, our employees, the broader community. We are a phenomenon. It's just a really powerful thing. The co-op has changed a lot over 50 years, obviously. The germ of the idea came from rejection of the corporate food system. So right off the bat, they wanted to buy better foods, as local as possible. The co-op was where we could get the kind of food we were looking for, which was kind of hard to find when it all began in the 70s. The first couple of years, we were experimenting on every level. When I first started working there, they had the produce displayed on these two by four racks unrefrigerated, you know, just painted wood. You know, it went from Wild West and funky to within three years, a radical grocery store. We were all involved in this kind of new thing, which was the natural food. Organic is kind of a household word, but back then... It was just the beginning of people getting interested in natural food and in the environment. So now people are actually asking for organic. The co-op itself prides itself on having a very wide range of organic produce. It went from being a fringe operation to mainstream. Lots of great brands and organic food, which is how I eat and how I live my life. The co-op definitely has a commitment to whole foods, natural foods, special dietary requirement. I have a restricted diet and it's really nice to be able to go in and find foods that I can eat. The co-op has a huge impact on local food sales and creating access for local farms and farm producers to help business growth and, and farm viability, which is so important for Vermont. As the co-op grew and the marketplace grew, we all grew along with it. The co-op is a huge part of this farm's success. The co-op's always been really great that pretty much anything we pitch to them, they say, great, let's give it a try. And it helps that a lot of people in the Montpelier area really know us. So when they see more of our stuff on the shelves, they buy it and then it does really well. We've grown, the operations get more sophisticated, more people involved, more perspectives. I think the key is that we've changed as the community changes. We've designed the whole business so that our values of cooperation are baked into our processes. And it's just a very powerful way to run a business. There's about 55,000 people that live in Washington County and our membership is 10,000 plus. It's not just a store. It's not just a food co-op, it's a community hub. The fact that we're owned by the community and are here to meet its needs and fulfill this mission is really the most inspiring part of the work. I love the co-op as a place of connection and exchange. It's almost impossible to do your grocery shopping without bumping into somebody that you know and love and getting to reconnect. Well, I go through town and people say hello because they recognize me from the co-op. That happens still all the time. 
during the pandemic. We realized how dependent we were on the co-op staying open. It was a trying time, but Derek Co-op is a leader in that sense, you know, really setting the standard for other businesses of how to do it right. I'm seeing the co-op do even more with the community in terms of new programs to give back to the community. Each year the community fund gets together and the grant recipients from this year's community fund are BIPOC owned farms in the local community. Telcom Farm and the Flying Buffalo LLC will be getting uh, money to help expand farm production. It's one of the many ways that the co-op works to kind of address gaps in the food system and then also you know, lift up a really strong and healthy, vibrant local economy. I think this is a really good time at the age of 50 to be thinking about what's next. I think the co-op in the future will continue to serve niche markets and help people find the food that they want to eat that nourishes them. I would love it if the co-op in the future could just keep doing what it's doing and continue to grow and support even more of you know the local food economy. I sincerely hope that the co-op is around for at least another 50 years and that it continues to grow in its capacity to serve the community. It's mostly important that we listen, we hear, we understand what are the unmet needs in our community so that we can continue to be true to our core value that we're here to serve members and meet the needs of the broader community. Happy birthday to the Hunger Mountain Co-op. 50 years is a huge accomplishment and I can't wait for the next 50. We've got this much money, this much muscle. We've got 10,000 members. Let's brainstorm something radical. I'm seeing a lot of love in the comments here from appreciation of memories of cheese cutting to first CSAs to the music um, and just wanted to give a shout out to 25 strings for providing the music in this video and the also the intro and exit music as well. So what a beautiful compilation of co-op community faces and stories from the last 50 years. Happy 50th to Hunger Mountain Co-op and everyone who made it happen, right? And I'm reminded as watching that video is sometimes we serve the whole community by a person by person basis. And so being able to see glimpses of some of the people who have participated in the co-op and work to build it into what it is today is very moving. And now we're gonna hear from storekeeping manager, Mary Mullally, who will share the vital statistics of the co-op at 50. Hi everyone. Hunger Mountain has a lot to celebrate for our 50th. We have 10,655 members, 187 employees, and 387 Vermont vendors. Our current sales are 27.3 million, 38% of that is local, 35% is organic, 46% from fresh, and 5% from other co-ops. Our total equity, which is the wealth that we have amassed, is currently 7.6 million. Um, we've also given away over $80,000 in donations and sponsorships and over $14,000 in grants. And shortly you'll be hearing about our newest environmental initiative. Thank you so much for all of your support. I will see you at the co-op. Thank you, Mary. And it is amazing to think that now there are nearly 11,000 member owners who collectively own the co-op together, including you all, right? So now that we've gotten into some celebration, let's do some interaction. We're gonna break into small groups right now for 10 minutes. And in addition to saying hello to your co-op neighbors, we're offering some questions we'd love to hear from you. So we'd love you to consider what is one favorite memory you have of the co-op and what is one hope you have for the next 50 years of cooperation. So we also wanna hear what you have to share. So if you could um, document in the chat once you're in your small group, Find a scribe from your group to take notes under your group numbers section, which you'll be able to see at the top of the screen once you're broken into your small group. So what Kari is going to do is he's going to help break us up into breakout groups. And you'll see an invitation pop up in your screen in a minute here. And then you'll be invited to, to go into a small room with a bunch of other people, virtually, of course, 
and we'll send out a five minute check in. And then you'll also get a one minute countdown before you come back into the room. So before hopping into your breakout group, you'll notice in the chat here that Rowan has posted a link where you can take notes. So if everyone wants to click on that link, you'll see a word, a shared Word document with group numbers. And Kari is going to invite you to go in your groups, look at your group number, and take a couple notes so we can collect information from you all. See you in 10, everyone. Does anyone need help getting into the breakout room? Hi, Sandra. Do you need help getting into your breakout room? Oh, I think you're muted. Hey, Stephen, how are you? Good to see you. I see a message from Betsy, a direct message to me saying, for some reason, I was the only person in my room and I had a big telephone symbol. So I left the breakout room. It seems like a lot of people have not joined their rooms. Okay. Maybe they're eating dinner. Could be. Oh, that's your experience. Can we join a different room? Good question. Um, let's see, I don't know if I can assign you.
I'm seeing the rooms and it says like move to, there's an option for move to. Oh, yeah. So I think that means you can move them to a different room. Oh. Stephen, I wish I could move you. Oh, who just moved them? Rowan, was that you? No, I don't think so. Oh, maybe he could. Maybe he joined something. Yeah. He, he wasn't joined before. Gotcha. I couldn't find his name. I was trying to move him. Oh, no, he's back. Um, so let me see if at least uh, Tracy. Oh, good idea. They're showing in the chat what they like. What do you think, Bonnie? Should I give like a four minute warning, something like that? That sounds good. I'm checking in here at the memories. I keep seeing Elizabeth Jesdale entering the waiting room and I've admitted her like three times. I have two. Okay. Maybe it's a connectivity thing. I never knew there was a kids play corner in the old co-op. I'm I'm seeing that in the notes. It's true. That's where the parents used to stash us. <laughs> you were one of those kids. Yeah. <laughs> I think Plainfield Co-op still has one, if I remember correctly. They do, which is amazing because they have such a small space. And they've got a nice little, it looks like a tree fort wedged into their co-op. Betsy Allen said she has to leave for another meeting, loved the video and seeing so many folks and a warm thank you. A number of people are, are direct messaging me. Um. Elizabeth said she keeps getting bumped. Um, and that's why she keeps winding up in the waiting room. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. We've admitted her several times, so I don't I don't get it. We'll keep yeah.
Ooh. Look, there's Liv live from Fox Market. Yay. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh, that's awesome. Jenny sharing about hey. working with the crew who did the earthwork for the foundations and parking lot of the co-op. Wow. So uh, should I give them the 60 seconds? Sounds great. Welcome back for those of you coming back into the main room. It was really fun reading through your comments and vision in the shared document. From neighborhood buying groups, that must have been really early on. A story about after breaking one of the members broke their ankle, how helpful everyone at the co-op was getting groceries out to the car, lending an extra hand. And the co-op being the first place people came to in the community when they moved. Feel free to continue to add to this document throughout the meeting. Just because we're coming out of breakout rooms doesn't mean you can't stop sharing. Or, yeah, that would be great. Thank you so much, everyone. Hope you had. Hopefully, you had time to connect and had some meaningful conversations and memories about with your interaction with the co-op in the past and thinking about where will this co-op be? How? What can we do together over the next fifty years? Right. So we heard from you and we hope you'll continue adding to that shared document, your favorite memories and your, your hopes and dreams for the co-op in the next 50 years. And now let's, we're going to hear from Senator Leahy, what he has to say about Hunger Mountain Co-op and Rowan is going to read a letter from the Senator. Yes. Here it is. Okay. So yeah, we are really lucky that, um, Senator Leahy, who knows something about longevity, retiring after almost 50 years in his job, um, wrote this lovely letter to recognize the co-op. He says, Dear staff, this year on their 50th anniversary, I offer my warmest congratulations to Hunger Mountain Co-op. For five decades, Hunger Mountain Co-op has brought nutritious food to kitchen tables across my hometown of Montpelier and our entire state of Vermont. With its dedication to the health of our local communities, Hunger Mountain Co-op has supported and strengthened Vermont's sustainable and local food systems. Today, in an age of growing corporate consolidation, Hunger Mountain Co-op's accomplishments are especially remarkable. Across the country, big food retail and agriculture businesses increasingly threaten the welfare of workers, consumers, farmers, animals, and the environment alike. Hunger Mountain Co-op shows an alternative path forward. This member-owned business relies on and supports nearly 400 local vendors. It supplies quality food, which ensures the vibrancy and health of our local communities. The importance of these relationships was proven during the first months of COVID. As regional and national food supply chains became frayed, the local food system, exemplified by Hunger Mountain, was both flexible and resilient. 
Importantly, Hunger Mountain Co-op provides a platform for its 185 employees and thousands of members to actively weigh in on the policies and decisions which direct the organization. It allows members to come together to solve collective issues and to find common sense solutions to better serve our local communities. In our current political climate, this kind of democratic discourse is more important than ever. Throughout our nation's history, Vermont has often led the way. It is no different in the food retail industry. Organizations like Hunger Mountain Co-op show the country there is a better way to put food on the table. On behalf of all Vermonters, I extend my gratitude to Hunger Mountain Co-op and wish its members a happy 50th anniversary. Oh, thank you, Ron, for reading that. And thanks to Senator Leahy. It's always cool that when our elected officials understand what's going on at the co-op, right? How he was mentioning coming together to meet, to create solutions to challenges in our community. And I saw a lot of that in the vision for the next 50 years. You know, what is the co-op's role as a central community hub in solving the problems that we share? So thank you for that. And now it's time to celebrate the people who make the magic happen at the co-op. So human resources manager Jay Wisner will be recognizing the co-op's employees. Hi, I'm Jay Wisner, human resources manager at the co-op. I'm pleased to have this opportunity to share my appreciation for the folks who deliver the essential services the co-op provides to our members and the wider community. I want to identify some of these people specifically. First, I have the privilege of sharing the results of our annual employee award for excellent customer service. Each year, an employee is chosen for this award after nominations and voting by all employees. This year, we chose Jan Tobias, who works as a cashier. Jan is consistently friendly and engaging. She's a role model for us all in the positive attitude that she brings to work and to life. Thank you, Jan. I also want to recognize several groups of employees for reaching milestones of service at the co-op this year. At 20 years of service, we have Tom Goulet in prepared foods, Beth Johns in finance, Robin Joy Pierce in community relations, Yuri Prince in prepared foods, Gerard Renfro in produce, and Diane Stark in the front end. At 15 years of service, we have Terry Barber in bulk foods, Annie Coughlin in produce, Kelly Sewell in wellness, Juliana Westcott in the front end. And we have a larger group at 10 years, Sonia Carrasco in bulk, Justin Cody in produce, Alex Fontaine in prepared foods, Laura Ferber in wellness, Tucker Hayward in meat and fish, Kurt Jensen in the front end, Kevin O'Donnell in operations, Dan Pia Needleman in prepared foods, Teddy Peterzak in the front end, James Sharp in bulk foods, Connor Spear in receiving, Jamie Young in prepared foods, and Kate Zariello in prepared foods. My thanks to all these individuals and to everyone who helps make the co-op such a special place to work and to shop. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. And now let's give a cheer and appreciation to the amazing co-op employees. Woo! I saw a lot of appreciation and love in the comments here and congratulations to the milestone and thanking staff and employees so much. Great, thank you all. And now we're going to hear from Claire Wheeler, who serves as the chair of the Hunger Mountain Cooperative Community Fund. She's going to share about this year's Cooperative Community Fund grant recipients. Buddy, I'm Claire Wheeler, and I currently serve as the chair of the Hunger Mountain Co-op Community Fund. I'm here today to tell you about the grants that we're giving out through the 2022 round of grant making. First, I wanna give a huge shout out and thank you to all the groups who took the time and energy to apply to the fund and also to thank uh, the committee members of the community fund, which include Jake Claro, Scott Hess, 
Julia Shire, Matt Levin, Richard Wiswall, and Stephanie Kokonen. Together, we get together as a group throughout the year to refine our process, conduct outreach, and then review and make decisions on uh, funding recommendations, which we then send to the Co-op Council for final approval. Our outreach effort this year was hugely successful. We have the most number of applications than we've ever had in our 10 or 11 year history with 27 grant applications coming in. And we're also making the highest number of grants uh, that we have ever in our history before with 14 grants, which I'm excited to tell you about. Um, our decision-making process is based on a set of criteria that really look at project viability as well as project value, um, how well the project is uh, connected to the co-op's mission to support local food system, health, nutritious, and um, healthy community members, um, and also to address uh, equity and advance equity in our community. I'm really psyched to say that we have uh, new funding for a couple of BIPOC-owned farms in the local central community um, area, as well as a lot of projects supporting and addressing food access and food insecurity within our communities. So without further ado, let me tell you about our grantees. So this year, we're really happy to be supporting the Milk with Dignity Standards Council. That's a group that looks to make sure that dairy farm workers and farmers uh, have uh, knowledge, access, and support and are protected. The Greater Northfield Seniors, we're supporting them to help with some kitchen upgrades for their, their the kitchen that they use to prepare Meals on Wheels, which uh, is you know home cooked food that gets to um, folks in need in the community. The Maquam Bay of Missisquoi Incorporated to support the Abenaki Food Bank. The Berry Senior Center to help them host a health cooking and eating class. The Flying Buffalo LLC to help them expand farm production with a caterpillar tunnel. We're also supporting the Good Samaritan Haven to install a vegetable garden and some fruit producing shrubs and trees at their new emergency, emergency shelter campus. So that'll be for staff and residents to, um, to work with. The Good Food, Good Medicine program to help run a winter wellness and food justice program for residents of affordable housing in Barrie. Onion River Food Shelf, uh, we're supporting them to increase their cold storage space. They're going to install some new technology and equipment to help with that. And we're also supporting the Twin Valley Senior Center to support their Meals on Wheels and in-house meals programming. Um, giving some money to Enough Ministries to help them create a walk-in food pantry and clothing closet that's going to be accessible 24 hours a day. And a few more grants as well supporting the Bethany Church to add in some fruit and veggie smoothies into their regular free community meals. Schoolhouse Farm to help them uh, purchase a manure spreader to build healthy soils. Kelcom Farm to uh, purchase some manure to help them do the same thing on their new farm startup in central Vermont, as well as the Ishtar, Ishtar Collective, which runs a free community farm in Barrie, and they grow food and deliver it for free to over 20 local families. So those are the 14 grants that we're really excited and feel honored to be able to make uh, to strengthen the local food system here in central Vermont. Thanks so much for your support of our work and see you around the co-op. Wow, that's amazing to hear about the record number of applications and grants. And I was really inspired to hear the, the breadth and the depth of these awesome projects supporting our local food system and community. And we've got even more good news, which is that this week's the Co-ops Council awarded an additional community fund grant of $1,000 to the Montpelier Senior Activity Center for the purchase of a new dishwasher to allow the Feast Meals on Wheels kitchen to be more efficient. So just icing to the cake on top of all those other incredible projects that were mentioned. And I'm seeing a lot of love in the comments here, fantastic work and terrific choices for the grants, a nice diversity of locations and programs, an impressive list indeed. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Eva and Kari for our annual report. Thanks, Bonnie. <clears throat> I have a lot to share here, starting with highlights from this past year in the context of our mission statement in terms of employees, how the co-op has been giving back to the community and the work of the council and the work that the council has been focused on this year. 
This first slide focuses on the part of our mission that calls for a vibrant community. Our, mission, our membership has grown steadily, reaching 10,655 at the end of this June. Each year, the co-op conducts a shopper survey, and this year you express an especially high level of satisfaction with our co-op. For example, when asked how likely you were to recommend the co-op to friends and colleagues, the average rating was very high with a rating of 4.7 out of five. We are proud to report that more people are taking advantage of our co-op cares discounts, which provides 10% off of our uh, off for our members with limited income. In terms of employees, we are happy to report that the co-op and our employees union reached tentative agreement on a new three-year labor contract which will significantly increase wages while maintaining our excellent benefit package. We hope the agreement will be ratified in the coming days, and we want to thank the members of the local 255 of the United Electrical Workers for being our partners in operating our co-op. As of June 30th, 2022, the co-op had 187 employees. About three quarters are members of the co-op, and 83% of those eligible participate in our retirement plan, which we strongly encourage. One of the things that is notable about our co-op is the long tenure of our employees. Even with an increased rate of turnover this past year, 57 of our employees have been with us for at least 10 years and 14 employees more than 20 years. And the co-op currently does business with 387 local vendors and made $8.5 million in purchases last year in support of that portion of our community. Another way to think about vibrant community is how the co-op gives back. We have really stepped up the amount that we give that we gave in the form of donations and sponsorships, just over $80,000 last year. These funds came both from co-op operations and donations from the members from, from members made through the co-op members rounding up at the cash registers and other means. About half of these funds went to food pantries and the Vermont Food Bank. So thank you for helping to address food insecurity in central Vermont. We have also grown our cooperative community fund, both in terms of assets in the fund and the amount of grants we distribute. And we just heard from Claire about all the amazing efforts we are, we are supporting with this year's grants. I also want to highlight some of the work that the council has been focused on this year. The council has devoted up to 20% of our meeting time this year to furthering justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion, also known as JEDI education. So as to engage in the local systems that prevent fair access to food and farmland. We look forward to putting what we've learned together to work and to considering ways to update our policies using an equity and inclusion lens. A big thank you to our bylaws committee who spent nearly four years developing and following through on proposals to update the co-ops bylaws. In May, we held a special meeting of the members and thanks to everyone who participated, we have a much improved set of bylaws which are available on the co-ops new website. The council has put a lot of effort into recruiting members to run for council or serve on committees. If you are interested in either, and keep in mind council committees accept new members throughout the year, please let us know. Such participation helps keep our co-op strong. Finally, our co-op, <laughs> excuse me, our carbon neutrality committee has been looking at possible solutions to reduce our carbon emissions as a co-op. In February, the council was pleased to approve the purchase of two offsite solar arrays, which will offset most of the electricity with a renewable source and save us money over the long term. Here's a photo of one of the sites, which are located in Addison County. With that, I would like to introduce General Manager Corey Bradley, who will continue this year-end report. Hi everyone, thanks Eva and thank you all for being here. It's been quite a year and it's really great to be together uh, with you tonight. 
I'm going to pick up where Eva left off and talk about the part of our mission that calls for us to help create a sustainable local food system. Uh, one way we measure sustainability uh, relates to the environment, environmental impact of our own operations. And as a result of the purchase of those two solar arrays, which came online in the fourth quarter, we decreased our net carbon emissions last year. And this continues a trend uh, from the past few years, and it's something that we plan to continue as we electrify more of our heating and cooking equipment. Additionally, in this realm, uh, we saw an increase in local food sold, both in terms of the dollars sold and in the uh, share of all sales coming from this from, from, from local this past year. Our, our mission also speaks to thriving cooperative commerce. And one way we measure that is in terms of our own business. Last year, we realized gross sales of $27.3 million. And uh, this was growth of 4.4%. Um, and that was a bit higher than the rate of price inflation over that period. Of course, uh, thriving cooperative commerce needs to include other co-ops. And to that end, we invest in other cooperatives and associated loan funds that support cooperative development. That amount has grown in recent years to over $674,000. And we support other co-ops by selling their products. Last year, it was about $1.4 million or uh, close to 5% of our total sales came from products made by our sister co-ops. And uh, now I'm going to shift to a very brief financial report um, for fiscal year uh, 2022, which ended, ended July 3rd. We're pleased to share that our financial statements were audited by Wegner and Associates, uh, who once again provided an unqualified opinion, meaning they observed no significant issues with our accounting. Net sales were, last year were $26.9 million. After accounting for the cost of goods sold, operating expenses, and all other adjustments, we had a net income before taxes of just over 163000 And after taxes, we ended up with, uh, excuse me, we ended up with a loss for the year of $49,752. And because of that, there will uh, not be a patronage refund for the year. A key reason for this loss was our decision to retire the renewable energy credits associated with our new solar arrays. Uh, when we purchased those arrays, we had the option to sell those credits on the open market. And if we had done so, another company would have bought them and put them into use, meaning that the overall amount of carbon pollution would not have changed. We decided to retire those credits uh, for the environmental benefits. And so that value had to be deducted from our income. Uh, finishing up, I'm pleased to report that our balance sheet indicates uh, solid overall financial health. We have total assets of $10.9 million, and that's made up of liabilities of $3.3 million and total equity of $7.5 million. And the, this equity is the wealth that we have accumulated as a cooperative community over our 50 years. Uh, I like to point out that without the co-op, much of this wealth would have left our community. So this is a good moment, I think, to pause and say thank you uh, to all of our members, our shoppers, employees, local vendors, and many others um, who supported us up to this point. Thank you very much. Also want to recognize our longtime produce manager, Robert Kurigan, who retired this month after nearly 38 years working at the co-op. Robert worked with many farmers over the years uh, and played an important role in the development of our Vermont food system. Congratulations to Robert and thank you. And I also need to thank Robert's co-manager, Muffin Spencer, who is also leaving the co-op uh, later this month. Uh, Muffin did an amazing job these past two years helping to lead our produce team through the pandemic and related challenges. Thank you, Muffin, and best wishes. And uh, lastly, I want to highlight our Neighbors Helping Neighbors Food and Fund Drive. This is year three for this program. Uh, this month and next, we will be collecting food and cash donations with everything going to the Vermont Food Bank, who will then distribute everything uh, to our local food pantries here in central Vermont. You can help by donating any amount at the cash register. We have secured matching donations from our community partners, Northfield Savings Bank and Feral Distributing. Food donations are being collected at the co-op every day, 
And I want to let you know that in the second half of December, we will be running a special buy one, give one promotion that will include dozens of staple items. Uh, this year, uh, we aim to raise $15,000 and 2,000 pounds of food. It's an ambitious uh, and important goal. So with that, Bonnie, I'm going to turn it back over to you to moderate questions and comments. Great. Thank you, Kari. And thank you to Eva as well. So it's time for your questions now, and we'll have about 10 minutes. I invite you to either post your questions in the comments um, in the chat, and I already see some cute. We got queued up. And you also could ask them out loud if you would like to do that. Do the raised hand reaction, and that will put you to the top of our screen. And Giles will prompt you to unmute yourself so you can click to unmute once that you are prompted. Um, and first, though, to kick things off, we received an emailed comment that I'll pitch over to Kari um, that, that shares, we are grateful for the curbside program, but please address the choice the co-op has made to repeatedly refuse the raising the level of the curbside program so there is equity in access for all to what the co-op provides. For nearly three years, the co-op for the willing, able-bodied, and those assumed to be otherwise healthy hasn't been the same co-op as it has been for those whom, whether because of disability, mobility, impairment, immunocompromised state, other health-related issues, or risk assessment and respect for the virus, COVID remains a true danger, and the inside of the store is a serious threat. So thanks. Thank you. Appreciate that comment. And Kari, what would you share? Yep, thanks. Um, so we developed the curbside pickup program back in the spring of 2020. That was right after the pandemic started. It is a very labor intensive program for us, but given the safety benefits, uh, we felt it was important to offer and uh, continue to offer at no additional charge. At one point at the peak, curbside sales were somewhere around 6% of total sales. Uh, but since the spring of last year, things have really changed. The sales have dropped off quite a bit, and they're generally less than 1%. We, we've talked about ending the program potentially or adding a service fee, um, but our plan right now is to get through this winter before we make any changes. I think that the primary concerns underlying the question have to do with the products that we're offering. It's true. We don't offer everything in on the on the curbside website that we do in store. Um, we we do our best to offer a similar experience uh, to the in-store one, but given the labor demands, it, it's really not feasible. One of the key differences is the bulk department, admittedly. We do not scoop um, um, products in custom amounts just because of the time, uh, the amount of time it takes. And I know it, it's challenging for some customers, but we're really trying to balance a lot of, of factors. And it's it was never designed to be a personal shopping program, but just a, a way to serve the, the customers who need it most of what they need safely and efficiently. And um, I also know that um, the members who submitted this question has been critical of the hours that we operate the program. It's not the same hours that we operate the store. And also the fact that the employees uh, um, are not currently required to wear a mask when delivering groceries to the car. I, I understand these concerns. Again, we're doing our best to, to balance the needs of, of all of our shoppers and, um, and, and the operational realities. Thank you, Kari. Um, next, we have a question from Elizabeth. What was the value of the solar credits? About seventy-five thousand dollars, something like that. And um, that 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 was an estimate. The um, it's interesting. There is still a market for these renewable energy credits, uh, but the projections was that they would dwindle down over time and um, last for somewhere in the area of ten years. But the total value that we made, sort of good faith estimate, was about seventy five thousand. Great. And Jen asks another clarifying question about that. Was the retirement of the solar credits a one-time expense or will it reoccur yearly? One time. Great. Um, Jeremy has a question about when is the cafe and seating area going to open back up? If not, why? Um, we made the decision not to reopen for this winter. Um, I think when I get through this COVID cold flu season, and we hope to open it um, sometime in, in the spring. Something to look forward to when the snow melts. Yeah. 
That's great. Um, I see a lot of appreciation here, just reading some of the comments, um, especially to Robert, congratulating Robert and to Muffin, thanking them. And there's also a, a suggestion here. How can we get more shoppers from Carolyn? How can we get more shoppers to use reusables such as reusable cups? How about having a contest for some ideas? Oh, like that? Play play a game? We, we recently played a, an operational game and staff having to do with customer service. And uh, that could be fun to do with members. We did a slash slasher chat trash uh, game last April that was uh, fairly successful. So let's try that. Let's try that. All right. I'm seeing, does anyone, and a reminder too, if anyone wants to ask a question out loud, you can raise your hand. Um, I'm just noticing a lot of gratitude for curbside. Can you make it possible for more, for members to have access to all the products? All aside the products. From, I, aside yeah, I, I, I spoke to that. It's, it's really not feasible at this time to offer everything. We yep. offer the vast majority. Um, Ron has a question. Your mention of masks makes me wonder what the current regulation about that is. I remember that a week or so ago it was required. What's the latest? Uh, we haven't required it um, is, since the spring, late spring, early summer, maybe. Um, we've generally followed or we have followed state or federal guidelines. Currently, the CDC is the only um, providing the only guidance, guidance on COVID period and Masking um, is in, is recommended for when the community level goes to high. Uh, when it went to medium a couple of weeks ago, we posted encourage we we encourage masking. Um, we're currently uh, to, just to be totally transparent, we're having a sort of an internal dialogue right now about what do we do if we if the community level goes to high, will we uh, require masking at the at the co-op again? The reality is that the climate has really changed, and while um, some people are masking, um, is sort of the farthest thing from a, a lot of other people's minds. And and the whole um, prospect of having to require masks is really daunting. So um, it's something we've we've been having a conversation about. Thanks, Kerry. Um, Lauren and Anne are asking about grab and go plastics, more earth friendly options. Yeah, that that's a tough one. Admittedly, um, it was interesting. Prior to the pandemic, I would say that plastic, especially single-use plastic, um, was, was probably the most voiced concern that I heard, a staff heard from members. Then the pandemic hit, and that concern went away for obvious reasons. Uh, now we're starting to hear it come back, um, and with prepared foods. Really, the best option is is to eat from the food bar and our reusable eco container. Um, but of course, that's at odds with not having the cafe open, which would be a uh, sort of the uh, friendliest ver version um, of of using that department would be to eat off a plate. But we're we're just not offering that, so it's a challenging thing. Um, our green team will continue to look at at um, what are the opportunities there, but it that is a, that is a tough one. And we'll continue to work on. Great. Um, Meredith asks, any chance members could put compost in the co-op bins? A serve as a drop-off point for compost. Um, I I cannot promise that tonight. I, <laughs> at different times. We have uh, worked with or been in conversation with the solid waste district about being a drop off point, um, but we would need a well defined program before we invite people to start bringing their their food scraps here. Great. Stephen was just clarifying, can these questions be saved and answer ones you don't get to directly after the meeting and a reminder that yes, that is the plan if we don't get to address anything right now. You can also, Jess just posted in the chat, you can also email annual meeting at hungermountain.coop. Yeah, we'll, we'll compile all of them and, and post responses at some point, let you know through the e-news. Great. Stephen says, thanks. I'm not seeing any more immediate questions. 
and we're about at that time. So thank you everyone for your awesome questions and participation and always pushing the co-op to be better, right? That's It's clear that there has been that continued presence and participation over the 50 years to make the co-op into what it is today. So thank you. Um, oh, now we've got some questions rolling in right when it's time. Yeah. So there's, I see the staff is answering questions. Um, I guess one last from Ken. Did the co-op lose money during the pandemic months? Did it receive PPP? Yes. Well, well first question, did we lose money? Um, we no, we were profitable the first two years of of the pandemic. Um, and actually, the pandemic was good for a lot of grocery stores because demand was up. People weren't eating prepared foods; they were eating food at home. Um, we did receive a PPP loan, and we did receive an employee retention credit. Both of those were federal programs designed to encourage businesses to retain their employees, which we did. Great, thank you, Car. All right, well, let's wrap up for now. Any questions that are unanswered, we'll make sure you get answers to um, following the annual meeting. And also a reminder, someone had asked me, is this being recorded? So if you have spotty internet right now, yes, this is being recorded. You'll have access to it. You can watch it, relive your favorite moments, right? Watch the videos again. Um, so we'll you'll get an email afterwards and you'll have it on the, web, the COPS website. So... If you have any additional questions, please email them to info, info at hungermountain.com, or you can, um, we'll also pop, post that into the chat right now. You can send a message right while it's on your mind. So now we're going to be learning about the upcoming council election and the candidates running, and I'm going to be turning it over to Rowan Sherwood again to share candidates and voting instructions. Okay. Yeah. So um, each year we as members select uh, or elect our council representatives. The council is our governing body and council members are our voice at the co-op. They oversee the general manager and set policies that guide how the co-op operates. They each bring their own expertise and areas of interest to the table, and they are here to listen to your ideas and concerns. This year, we have four candidates for three open seats. Here are some short videos from each of the four candidates. Uh, in addition to this, you can learn more about each candidate on our voting website, hungermountaincoopvotes.com or in print in the exit way of the store. So uh, let's see the videos and then I'll have a little more information about voting. Hi, my name is Ashley Muscarella. I am running for the Hunger Mountain Co-op Council. I believe that our co-op is the sustainable grocery option for our local community. I believe that Hunger Mountain Co-op um, has the opportunity to promote local agriculture, reduce waste shopping for our bulk food section, and to support and ensure that low and moderate income families can shop sustainably at the co-op. I believe my drive and passion as a teacher and working for nonprofits fuels my work and I hope to represent you on the council. Hi everyone, my name is Jeff Roberts. I've been a member of the co-op since the mid 1990s when I first arrived in Vermont and an interim board member since earlier this year. I've been really thrilled with my experience so far and believe in the life of this organization and its critical importance to Central Vermont. Thank you, bye-bye. Hi everyone, my name is Julia Shire. I've been in Vermont for about eight years and I work at the Agency of Agriculture here in Montpelier. I've greatly enjoyed being the treasurer while serving on the Co-op Council for the last year in an interim role. I believe that a thriving, resilient food system is vital to our region, and I love the role that our co-op plays in our small community. I would greatly appreciate your vote to continue serving on the council. Hi, co-op members. My name is Amanda Sardonis, and I'm running for council. I currently serve on the co-op's carbon neutrality committee, where I'm working on our climate action plan to measure and reduce our carbon emissions. I hope to bring my experience with sustainability practices and partnerships into the co-op strategic planning process 
so the co-op can continue to serve the community for another 50 years. Great. Uh, so there's a an intro to the four candidates. Uh, this past May, co-op members approved a bylaw revision that changes the timeline for voting to elect our council members. Starting this year, voting will begin rather than end with our annual member meeting. So voting is now open and will be for approximately two weeks. As I mentioned earlier, we have three open seats and four candidates. You've now heard from them directly. Uh, and please feel free to visit our voting website. Again, it's hungermountaincoopvotes.com to read their full bios and cast your vote. You may also find all the information you need and ballots for voting on the wooden structure in the exit way of the store. The voting period will close at 8 p.m. on Sunday, November 27th. So thank you for participating. Thank you, Rowan. And wow, that is a very impressive slate of candidates. It's going to be a hard choice, but you got to love a contested election. That's that's great that you have that, that candidate pool. It's now time to share the Hunger Mountain Cooperative Community Award. So each year, an annual award is given to a Hunger Mountain Co-op member, owner, customer, vendor, employee, council member, or community member for special contributions to our cooperative community and the advancement of our mission and ends. We'll now hear about the Hunger Mountain Cooperative Community Award recipients who are in the house. You can see them, Liv and Donnie from, and it, we'll be hearing about them from Human Resources Assistant, Ellie Wood. We recognize the sound is a bit tough to hear. We encourage you to soak in the visuals. Great. giving some accolades to the winner of this year's Hunger Mountain Co-op Community Award. I nominated Donnie and Liv at Fox Market because I think they've done just an amazing job of really supporting the co-op. Pumpkin carving scenario out back, all sorts of cool things. So, so I came upstairs so I could just quick show this lovely space that Fox Market has created upstairs for folks to be able to dine and hang out and spend some time in a cozy space here overlooking pastures of East Montpelier, really cozy space here. And it's just a great example of this community, little market doing amazing things in our space. And so a huge congratulations to Fox Market for doing what they're doing. Yay, go Donnie and live. Let's make Sucker Mountain Co-op! 
Congratulations, Donnie and Liv, and I see you there. Um, that was really fun to be walked through. I've never been to Fox Market, clearly. I have to come to Montpelier and go there. Um, big congratulations and shout out. Looks like the another community hub. So congrats once again. I'm seeing some love in the comments here. And uh, some other curiosity from folks who have never been to Fox Market. So hopefully you'll get some new, new um, community members walking in the door. Big congratulations. Um, I see there was a couple comments. Oh, best pot pies ever. Mm, it's that time of the year, isn't it, for pot pies? <laughs> and the wine club. Oh, my gosh. Okay, you've got some good hype people here for Fox Market. Congratulations once again on this well-deserved award and for your contributions to the community. Um. I do see a note here from a couple folks that went to try to vote and it there's a an error that superstar staff are fixing it will be fixed soon have no fear. So I'm going to turn it back over to Kari one last time to bring us to wrap up and close out our evening together. Thank you so much everyone. Thanks Bonnie. Uh and congratulations to Liv and Donnie and thank you for your uh service to the community. I know what they do is uh, very hard work, uh, but clearly there's a lot of joy involved too. So a uh, reminder that we uh, have one more member roundtable discussion this Monday at 6 p.m. Uh, this will be an opportunity to further discuss uh, the topics that we covered tonight or any others that you'd like. And you can join us via Zoom and you can find that login link on our website. And you can also email us at annualmeeting at hungermountain.coop. We will respond to all uh, questions and comments, and we'll compile them and share them out. And we really appreciate your input. And one more reminder that uh, our uh, Neighbors Helping Neighbors Food and Fun Drive is running now through the end of December. We're collecting cash donations at the register and food donations in our collection bins with all proceeds going to our Central Vermont uh, Food Bank, food pantries uh, with help from our friends at the Vermont Food Bank. And please consider a gift to our Cooperative Community Fund. So far this year in conjunction with our 50th, we've raised a bit uh, more than $61,000. So we could use your help in reaching our goal of $75,000. The fund is designed to operate in perpetuity and it will be generating grants for many important projects for many years to come. And I like to think of the Cooperative Community Fund as our gift to our future community. So thank you very much and back to you, Eva. Thank you, Corey. Um, I want to acknowledge our council member, Andrew Sullivan, who will be stepping down after this meeting. His council term ends tonight and he is not running for re-election. Andrew has served since 2020 and we have benefited from his perspectives as a co-op employee and a member. Also, let's thank Nick Sivret, <coughs> who has served as staff representative to the council for the past year. The council deeply appreciates the employees who serve in this role to make sure a staff voice is included in our deliberations. And Nick, Nick has done that well. Um, uh, I also wanna give some thank yous uh, to Matt Seascholtz, who provided the glass apple awarded to Fox Market and Pizzazz Pottery, who's inscribed Ceramic plates are given to outgoing council members. Uh, the live broadcasting and our 50th anniversary of video by Orca Media and music in that video uh, is by 25 Strings. I would also like to thank community partners who have donated to our Cooperative Community Fund this year, United Natural Foods, Twin Pines Cooperative Foundation, and the Hickok and Boardman Insurance Group. And let's please thank our community partners who are supporting this year's Food and Fund Drive, Northfield Savings Bank, and Farrell Distributing. Many, many thanks to Bonnie for moderating our meeting tonight. 
We also need to thank the employees who put in many hours planning and preparing for this event. Stephanie Kanonen, Rowan, <coughs> excuse me, Rowan Sherwood, Jess Knapp, Robin Pierce, and Giles Brule. Thank you all for your support. We would love your feedback on how this evening, how this meeting went. A survey will pop up in all participants' browsers shortly after the meeting is adjourned. On to our raffles. Um, raffle winners, Mega Food Gummy Pack, Carol Van Tunen. Mega Food Variety Pack, Harriet uh, Buccicio. Uh, Pranam Yum Essential Oils. There are two winner winners, Kendra Mills and John Lewis. And please forgive me in advance for mispronouncing any of the names that I am that that I happen to do tonight. So um Sun Soil, there are also two winners, Pam Finnegan and Becky Herman. Nordic Naturals, uh Marib Maribeth Damansky, Big Gear Coffee, there were four winners with uh Mary Dolenmeyer, Stephanie Lahar, Stephanie Kaplan, and Sherry White. Red Door Bakery, there were two winners, Jed Davis and Helen, Helen Nineltowski. Uh, Puka, Bund Puka Bundle, Paul Kate won. Uh, Wizzle Bagels, Robert Walker won. Co-op Merch, uh, Dana Woodruff won Co-op Merch. And Local Products, Ed Paquin won those. And... Um, excuse me, I'm just having a little trouble reading this last one. Fun Yum's Tart, uh, Fred Pond won front, uh, Fun Yum's Tart. Okay, um, and our grand prize goes to, um, a $100 Hunger Mountain Co-op gift card to N Nora LaCroix and a $130, $130 integrative acupuncture gift card for a new for a new patient visit there are two winners robert kerrigan and jim passberg congratulations everybody um so i just want to say thank you all for joining us tonight uh i wish you uh, a happy and healthy and uh, safe holiday season uh and let us Adjourned by consensus at 7.26 p.m. Thank you, Eva.